Hello and welcome to Mike's Secret Math Tutor. In this video we want to find the value of different trigonometric functions when our angle is either larger than 90 or smaller than 0. So to kind of describe what uh, problems we might run into is maybe want, we want to find something like sine of 200 degrees. And it's not quite clear you know what right triangle we should form because we've gone way beyond that first quadrant and now we're in some other quadrant like maybe way down here. Uh, there is a process for this and the key is really finding the proper reference angle to the x-axis. But let's go ahead and look at those tips. So in this process, let's suppose you have an angle that is larger than 90 or maybe smaller than zero. So maybe end up out there somewhere. You can think of your uh, real angle as being like this red angle right here. The first part of this is you need to find out the reference angle or how much farther you would have to go in order to get on that x-axis. Sometimes you might uh, be having to continue a little bit farther. Sometimes you might even have to backtrack. But this blue angle right here, which I'll mark off as theta prime, is what we would consider our reference angle. Now, once you have that reference angle, it will be between 0 and uh, 90 degrees. So you can use that to go ahead and figure out the value of your trigonometric function. Keep in mind that uh, the value of this tri trigonometric function won't be exactly the same as maybe what you're looking for. But if they are different, uh, they're only going to be different in terms of either a positive sign or a negative sign. So you pretty much have all the information you need, you just need to attach the proper sign to it. So in the last step, you can figure out what sign it needs to have by remembering that all students take calculus. And this is just really a neat way to remember that in the first quadrant, all functions are positive. In the second quadrant, the sign and its reciprocal are positive. Quadrant number three, tangent and its reciprocal are positive. And in the quadrant number four, cosine and its reciprocal are positive. So if you know what function you're dealing with and you know where that true angle falls, you'll be able to determine whether it should be positive or negative and attach the proper sign. Uh, it sounds like kind of a complicated process, but you'll see when we uh, get to the examples, it's actually not that bad. Um, and it does have a, a bit of a rhythm to it. All right, so for the first one, we want to figure out what is the value of sine of 300. And just to give us some intuition on maybe what it should be, I'm going to start off by drawing a nice little coordinate axis up here. So the first thing I want to do is figure out where is this angle, uh, you know, what quadrant does it exactly fall in? And one thing that I can do to help uh, myself out is really just count out uh, the major angles in here until I eventually reach 300. So let's see, I'd start at zero degrees. Then it'd be at 90, 180, 270. If I went and eventually got back to my starting point, I'd be at 360 degrees. But that's a little bit too far. Uh, it looks like 300 falls right there. So let's go ahead and mark that out. So what you want to think of is that we went all the way around and we eventually stopped to make that 300 degree angle. So our reference angle it needs to get back to the x-axis, needs to go just a little bit farther. And that's what we're going to end up uh, using to compute things. Let's see, if this red angle was 300 and all the way around is 360, that'd make our reference angle just another 60 degrees. All right, so we're going to use that 60 um, to get our value. So sine of 60 degrees. Now, this value for our reference angle, like I mentioned before, is between 0 and 90. So we can use a variety of ways to actually figure out this one. Um, you could recognize that it's a very special value, like our 60 degrees. You could look it up in a table, uh, use a unit circle, whatever you need to. But you can use those tools to go ahead and find its value. Sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 divided by 2. Now, the last step is really figuring out, should our true angle be positive or negative of the square root of 3 over 2? And of course, to really figure out that, we think all students take calculus. And it looks like our angle falls in that fourth quadrant. So in the fourth quadrant, cosine and its reciprocal, those are the positive ones. Well, we're not dealing with cosine or its reciprocal, so we know that our value has to be negative. So we'll use the same square root of 3 over 2, but we'll simply make it negative. So there's the value for sine of 300 degrees, a negative square root of 3 divided by 2. 
Let's do this again so we get a better uh, sense of how this process works. And we'll go ahead and do this one with tangent of 210 degrees. It's like before I'm gonna start counting around, seeing where that 210 falls. So 0, 90, 180, 270. Um, looks like our 210 is over in this quadrant. Quadrant one, two, three. So in this case, 210 degrees brought us right there. And my reference angle, what will take us back to the x-axis is actually just this little angle right here. Now, I like drawing out these little pictures because sometimes if I'm not very good about doing the calculations in my head, it reveals a lot on how I'm going to find the proper angle. So visually, I can see that we went uh, 210 degrees, but we're going back uh, just a little bit in order to um, uh, get to that 180. So uh, 210 minus what is equal to 180 degrees? Well, that's not so bad. We can solve that. We'll get a uh, negative 30. Multiply both sides by the negative. So I see that my reference angle is just a 30 degrees. Let's mark that out, 30. All right, we have our reference angle. So we need to figure out what is tangent of 30 degrees. And again, you could figure this out by looking at a table or looking at some of those special triangles um, uh, from one of my other videos. But you should know this has a really nice value. This is the square root of three all divided by three. All right, now let's figure out whether this is positive or negative. All students take calculus. So we are in quadrant number three. So tangent and its reciprocal are positive. Sure enough, that's exactly what we have. We have tangent. So we're gonna leave it as a positive number. Square root of three divided by three. Let's do this two more times and uh, let's go ahead and look at those angles that are less than zero degrees um, and see how this is really the same process. Let's find cosecant of negative 225 degrees. So since I'm dealing with a negative angle, I'm still gonna count around this, but I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So I'm at zero degrees, negative 90 degrees, negative 180, and negative 270. So as I count around, I can see that negative 225 will be in this quadrant right here. Negative 225 all the way around. So for our reference angle, in reference to the x-axis, I'm looking for this angle right here. So 180, how much farther would I have to go in order to get to that 225? Well, we'd just have to go another 45. So we will use cosecant of 45 degrees. And notice how that uh, reference angle is still positive. Even though I'm dealing with these negative values and whatnot, uh, I'm gonna use the positive reference angle of 45. Okay, looking that value up, I know that it's the square root of two. So let's go ahead and attach the proper sign. It looks like when we are in quadrant two, sine and its reciprocal, uh, those are going to be the positive functions. And hey, what do you know? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so I know that I need to have this remain positive. So we will say that the value is the square root of two. All right, one last one, just to make sure we are good. This one is negative 390 degrees. So zero, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, still not there. Uh, ooh, actually, I need to go just a little bit beyond negative 360 and then we'll have our angle. So it looks like we're over here in quadrant number four. So visually, what did we do? We went all the way around and then just a little bit farther. This would make our reference angle, angle right there. So I went to 300, 360 degrees and then I went a little bit farther. How much farther did I have to go? I had to go another 30 degrees. So we will use that for our reference, sine of 30 degrees. Nice. So we have a, a good key value like 30 degrees. I know that its value is one half. So sine of 30, one half. Uh, now that I have that, let's grab our sine and finish this problem. 
We are in quadrant number four. Cosine and its reciprocal are the positive functions. Uh, we're dealing with sine, so it's not either one of those. So we know that our function has to be, has to be a negative one half. And there you go. So whether you uh, have an angle that's larger than 90 or less than zero, you can still figure out what its uh, value should be by thinking about these reference angles. Also, don't forget uh, that all students take calculus so you can attach the proper sign to whatever value you get. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.